Hello, Yeri. How are you? Hi, Gonzalo. We're with Gonzalo Fernandez. Very well pronunciation. I hope my pronunciation doesn't get uh, so bad that people can understand. I, I understand you perfectly. So okay. you're in, Gonzalo, you're in Costa Rica, but can you uh, introduce yourself a bit? I mean, you know, what are you doing in Costa Rica? Are you from there or what do you do? How did you uh, get to this point in your life? Well, uh, Jerry, what I can tell you is that uh, I was born here in Costa Rica 63 years ago. And uh, for some reasons unknown, uh, there was some interest in looking for answers. And then the search started when I was really young, 17 years old, reading uh, a lot of uh, Krishnamurti's books, uh, trying to, to live. Uh, what, uh, what happened is that I understood what he was saying, it, it made sense, but they couldn't live uh, what he was telling. After that, uh, there came, came a time of uh, transcendental meditation, and for many years, I practiced uh, Zazen in a, a Zen group here in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And then I kept the search, and then I was uh, disappointed with uh, so much uh, ceremony, traditions in the Zen group. And then I became kind of independent uh, searcher. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody gave me the book of uh, Ayan Dad, Nisargadatta's book. Mm -hmm. And I keep with that book like for 10 years, <clears throat> reading and reading the book. And I realized that I couldn't meet uh, Nisargadatta because he wasn't alive. But uh, through a magazine, uh, it's called uh, what, what is Enlightenment of uh, Andrew Coyle. Yes. I read an. Yes, I read an interview <clears throat> that uh, this guy made to, to Ramesh Balsekar. Yeah. And then I said, well, this is a guy who is in the same tradition. And uh, it, it made some impact on me, the, 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 the interview. Then I wanted to go and um, meet him. It took some time. I didn't have enough money. <clears throat> and then all circumstances changed and I could uh, go to India. I started a trip in north of India mm -hmm. and uh, was hoping to, to see Ramesh, really kind of afraid that I wouldn't see him before, before, I mean, because he was old. So I was afraid that he could die before I got there. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the first time that I, that I was there in the afternoon and uh, he opened the door and he said, this is no the hour for satsang. The, the, the hour for satsang is in the morning. And uh, I said, yes, yes, Ramesh, I know. But uh, I was with my girlfriend at that time. And I said, we just came because uh, we wanted to be sure of the address so we, we wouldn't miss the, the satsang. And he said, ah, OK, OK. The first uh, question that I made to, to Ramesh was, uh, uh, are you OK? And he said, yeah, no complaint. <laughs> yeah. Still afraid that I would be able to, to talk to him. So I spent uh, six weeks going to satsangs every day. And then it came a day when we were like uh, in a dialogue because uh, he, he used to have like two chairs in front of him that he called the hot chairs mm -hmm. where people who had any comment, any question could come and talk to him and the rest of the people could just listen. And uh, at that day, a <clears throat> particular day, um, we were having an exchange and uh, he said something about the only recommendation that he uh, gives to people is to look to everything that happened during the day. Yeah, because his main kind of, uh, you know, the, the basis of his teaching was in, in the sense of uh, doership. So he he wanted people to, to see by themselves that there is no no such a thing as a, a doership. So I told him, no, Ramesh, I haven't done that practice because it's so clear here that, uh, I mean, there is, uh, there is no even uh, actions. There are only re reactions of this uh, body organism to whatever arises. 
So I didn't need to do it. And then he looked at me, he laughed, and he said, so Gonzalo, who am I talking to? And in that moment, the realization just came like, yeah, who is he talking to? I mean, there is no one here who, who he is talking to. And then I left. I didn't need to, to, to go back to Ramesh. I went and I continued traveling in India, went to Tiruana Malai. I had a, like a, a dialogue with the Muji. Then I went south of India where I met the only Zen teacher who is there in India, uh, Sami Yama. And then uh, I, for, long, for a long time, because I was so much in Krishnamurti's uh, teaching, I wanted to meet uh, Bimala Takar, who was the only person who really Krishnamurti addressed her to, to go and talk in his name. And then I went and spent some time with her, like two weeks where I could meet her in the afternoon. And that was the end of the trip to India. And it was really very important for me, that trip. Yes. Not Definitely. for me, but for the understanding more. What, uh, so what year was that? That was exactly five years ago. It's going to be uh, in, no, in November. Uh, it's going to be six years when I met uh, Ramesh. Oh, wow, yeah. Near the end of his life, yeah. Yeah, but uh, very clear and very very willing to, to, to talk to people every day, very kind of a, a cheerful guy, very, very nice person, very, very, um, only a concept, like he said, but that concept could bring the understanding. Hmm. So he, uh, so, so that was five, six years ago. This is 2013 we're talking. I, I want to see yeah, what the year, no, I want to see what the year is because, you know, a hundred years from now when people listen to this, they want to know, they want to know uh, what year that was. Year uh, was. 2007, November 2007. Yeah. I was there when uh, <clears throat> Chris Herbert, who you know very well. Yeah, yeah. And I was uh, chatting with him the other day, and he said, give uh, my regards to, to Jerry, because I told him that uh, we are going to have a conversation. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, we had a, an exchange with Ramesh and with uh, Chris, very interesting. I mean, it was the first time that Chris uh, came to see Ramesh, and for him, I think that it was uh, also very important. It made an impact on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So we have the same spiritual father. We are brothers. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, Ramesh, uh, yeah, that can be, I guess a number of people can say that about Ramesh. So you've had good, you know, good people, good teachers from starting from Krishnamurti and yeah, I think that, uh, I, the Sargadatta and yeah. all the, uh, I, t I t been, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I've been lucky in this life in that sense that I have met a really very nice people, very uh, uh, people who were really into, into awakening. Uh, even my, my first teacher in uh, Zen Buddhism, uh, Roshi Philippe Kaplo, <clears throat> was, I was close with him and I really liked him. I, I loved him. He was a very sincere uh, teacher in his tradition. Mm. So, and also other people who I didn't get to, to meet, to meet like uh, uh, Krishnamurti, who I didn't meet, but uh, I felt he was very close to me because I read almost all his books and really tried to understand him. Yeah. He, the understanding was more like kind of intellectual, like it happened with many of the people who say they, they weren't followers, but uh, they became followers even if he didn't want people to be followers, he didn't believe in the, in the guru thing, but mm -hmm. they kept like uh, repeating what Krishnamurti wanted to, to say, but uh, not really leaving it because uh, it became something more like kind of intellectual. 
Yeah, yeah. And that happened to, that happened to me also. I, I have to recognize there was a moment when I could kind of start living that, but the real moment was uh, with Ramesh when after, after that all the, the the teachings, all the sayings, everything became uh, clear. Mm -hmm. So how how was your life then after Ramesh? Did you just ordinary or how would you yeah, say? Yeah, very ordinary. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, nothing really special. I mean, like uh, he say that uh, something that uh, it had made sense more and more. And he say that first is kind of the awakening, and then there is the 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 um, he call uh, what's the name. You know, when that becomes more clear every day, mm -hmm. deliverance. He call it deliverance. First the awakening and then deliverance. Uh -huh. So it's, it's more like a more living into 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 the understanding in daily life. So nothing really changed outside. Gonzalo, the guy that people knows as Gonzalo, the crazy Gonzalo who does this and doesn't do that, who likes that and doesn't like that. The same, nothing special, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, here, yeah, there is a lot of uh, peace, uh, kind of happiness, uh, whatever is happening, whatever the situation, there is a, a confidence that uh, it's, it's what is what is needed. I mean, it's what is happening, and that's it. I mean, what else could it be? If it is, if it is happening, it's because it is. Yeah, I guess. What, what, now, what's Costa Rica like as far as, uh, you know, a place for, I don't know. How, what's, how do you like living in, I mean, you're, you are, you know, from Costa Rica. So, uh, well, how, how open is it to people with these kinds of uh, teachings? And uh, More and more, uh, people, well, people have... Uh, the spirituality, I, and I guess it's on, not only in Costa Rica, but it, it has been also in the United States, Canada, Europe, has been more like uh, people looking for uh, benefits out of uh, practices, you know, like uh, uh, benefits for the physical, for the emotional, for the psyche in general. And this is, has been like uh, the idea of the spiritual practices. More and more, and I think that's thanks to a lot, thanks to Advaita, to the non duality. It has been an awakening that this is not the, the spirituality that could, uh, could change the outlook of, uh, of, of, of people, right? Yeah. So uh, I remember when I was reading this book, uh, I am that, Nisargata. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember. I have tried to remember how that book came came to my hands, but at that time, nobody knew anything about uh, uh, non-duality, Advaita, or anything. Many years later, I made like two copies, and some people got interested into that. And then I met uh, two or three people who already were into into this. One woman who was a uh, uh, listening to the talks of uh, Gangaji and uh, another person who had been into some teachings with Andrew Cohen. So those were the first people that I met who were in the same, in the kind of the, in the same path of, of uh, awakening. Did you, um, at that time, did you form any like groups or any regular meetings or, or just a few people that you knew just... Did you, did you organize anything at that time? When uh, when I went out of the Zen uh, tradition, not only not only me but another other other friends also wanted to get out of because uh, they found that it, that was very religious and that was not what they were looking for. So we organized like small groups where we meditated, and the meditation uh, was in consisted in sitting down and then for a while being silent and then after that we read some 
some uh, words from different teachers, uh, Tim Nahan or uh, Juan Po or whoever we had uh, the book of. And then that was the meditation we we followed for some years. So that and was then that, the first. Yeah, go ahead. No, and then after that, uh, we 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 learned that the. Uh, Eckhart Tolle was coming to Costa Rica, but he came from the United States with a group already formed there, with their all everything paid, and he came to a place here. And when we knew about it, we were so excited, like, okay, let's go there and try to 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 listen to him. He's coming, so we can be in person there. Mm -hmm. And then we looked for the place, and they didn't allow us to to to. To go into the group because they, they say that this is a group that is totally private and coming from the United States or everything organized there, you cannot do that. Wait a minute, they so came Eckhart Tolle, Eckhart Tolle, excuse me, came from yeah. you know U.S. I mean he's from Canada with a group, a North American group of people. They yeah. came to Costa Rica. He came from the, from the United States. Yeah. Yes. Came from the United States for a week of. Uh, yeah and um they came to costa well, rica and they wouldn't let costa ricans be part of it no because uh, everything was organized in the united states and they had this that, that was the second time that he came to costa rica a very expensive place uh, that we have here for this type of uh, meetings with famous uh, yoga teachers with famous uh, psychotherapists or uh, new age teachings so the people who come here, they are people who can afford it, who can pay all the, all the, all the price they ask for for everything included, including some trips to the volcanoes or to some beach in Costa Rica. But they wouldn't. But the local people, they wouldn't allow them to come in. They didn't have any free yeah. tickets or any. They, they wouldn't give any benefits yeah. to a to a handful of local people like yourself. Nothing, nothing like that. So what we decided, a friend of mine and me, we decided to start writing to Eckhart Tolle to, to ask him that if he was coming to talk in Costa Rica, at least he should uh, uh, allow a group of people to, to, to go into, into the talks. And we insisted, insisted, but we didn't have any answer. We were not sure that uh, if the uh, emails the, were going through, or not? Well, and one day saw mm -mm. Yeah. What year was this around? So he must have been famous by now. He was famous, but not so much as, as now. This could have been like, wow, eight years ago, something like that, maybe. Around 2005. He was pretty famous then, but maybe it was a little before that. So maybe but, a little um, before that. So how did uh -huh. that, so tell me more what happened then? With. Okay, then one day the people of, uh, because they have our numbers, uh, names, numbers, telephone numbers, these people uh, from the, the, the place, the, this uh, uh, organization, they call us to go and talk to them. We went and uh, they say that Eckhart Tolle had called them and say that he had a dream and in that dream he was talking to local people and giving a talk in Spanish. So he was asking to us to organize a, a group, not so large group, but some people who are really interested into these uh, teachings and have a day only for local people. Hmm. Okay. And we were, we were really happy. Huh? And then uh, we organized, we called people here, and finally 120 people went to, to listen to Eckhart Tolle. Wow, so did he uh, charge, or was it free, or small no, charge? Uh, he charged uh, uh, something like $5, okay. and, the organization, and the organization charged like $15. All right, so it was reasonable, sounds like it. Yeah. And that was the moment when he gave his first talk in Spanish, and very well, uh, very well. Wow. Uh, uh, very well, well, you have, you have very to. Well. 
you have to commend him for that. But I don't know why he had to have a dream about it. I mean, it just, you know, you know, why is he having a dream? It should be common sense. You go to a, you know, he's an international world teacher. You go to a foreign country, you, yeah. you, you make some connection with the local people, you know. I don't know why he has exactly. to have a big fancy That's dream, exactly. you know, and, and have someone else call. Yeah. Why can't he call himself? I don't understand these people that think they're so important yeah, this, that they can't call you themselves. They have somebody have else call you. Away. I don't deal with people like that. When when someone says, you know, someone will call me and, you know, I say, tell that person to call me or I don't I don't like to deal with people like that anymore. You know, I got to talk yeah, directly yes, to I people. Understand you in, but anyway, it was nice that he... Uh, that he, that he, you, you, had a, you heard him talk. He was, came down, you know, yeah. Right, right. And oh. he was kind of a, you know, you probably know what's happening now that he, this place is full of people at $70 is the ticket to, to, to listen to a talk of him. I mean, he became like kind of a, a, a businessman, a, bus, a spiritual businessman. Yeah, well. I don't know if he can help that. You know, he, he sells so many books and he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to charge anything. He doesn't, he can just do f things for free. Does he really need more, another another five or $10 million? That's what I, that's what I think. I mean, like, why, why to charge so much for, he already had enough money because of his books and his videos and all that. Why to continue making a lot of money? I, I don't understand unless, there are things that we don't know, and maybe he gives away all the, the money to some organization. I hope so. Maybe he does. He doesn't need any money. What, what is he fooling around for? He doesn't need any anything. Yeah. I don't understand. And, and maybe, maybe he doesn't have any. Maybe he gave it all away. I don't know. But, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know why someone like that, who's so well known, doesn't just go out there and talk for free to... As many people as can come, 50,000, 100,000. Yes. But anyway. That's, that's, one, of the, that's one of the things that uh, well, what's yeah, he fooling I never around heard. for? What is yeah. he fooling around for, trying to do business? Go out there and talk. But it's but it's true. If you talk to a lot of people, you have to, it costs money to control the uh, all the flow of the people and, you know, the crowd control. I mean... That money has yeah. to has to be money. People have to be paid to uh, manage everything. So, uh, so, so there is a need for money, but uh, doesn't doesn't have to be. It could be minimal, I suppose. I I heard that the Rolling Stones were giving a a concert and people were uh, were mad at, at them because uh, they were charging a lot of money. I think it was like ninety dollars for the ticket, and. Uh, and I thought about it, but uh, first they are five persons, and the organization with lights, uh, sound, all this, it really, it, they, they have to spend a lot of money it's into true. that, right? Yeah, that's true, yeah. you know, they have to get, they so have they to, are, uh, uh, yeah. They, they could uh, uh, justify more than uh, Eckhart Tolle. <laughs> yeah. And they are in business, huh? but, uh, so it seems that uh, Many spiritual teachers now, or, or, <clears throat> or who they think they are spiritual teachers, are into into money. Yeah. So now let's yeah, talk I mean, about. So, so you're a kind of person. You, when you got out of the Zen group, you started a group. When you got out of the Zen, you started a group. And so it sounds like you're a type of person that that you know can start groups and bring people together. That sounds like it's part of your personality. Yeah, I think that this is part of my life uh, has pulled me to do, especially after, well, this, this the, the first groups uh, were with people, with friends that we already know from the old days in the, in the Zen Buddhist group. And then after uh, that, uh, we have a small group, it was called like after Eckhart Tolle, because what we did was to sit down and uh, be in silence for a while and then we look at a video of Eckhart Tolle. After that, we had a coffee, a, a tea. We talk uh, about other things, and we left. We have this small group for for some time, and then uh, some some information through internet about other people who were talking 
about uh, non-duality came into the scene and then uh, after that uh, some teachers have come through through contact with them and inviting them to come to Costa Rica yeah yeah so at some point you were you're inviting teachers so now you're in bringing teachers you're bringing teachers in so I know you've brought in so t- you know, tell us who you know who you've brought in well at this uh, point uh, we started with a, a woman who she she works uh, with the uh, I don't know if you know about her uh, Tony Parker is a woman a North American woman yeah who was part of the same group same Buddhist group that I was in but at some time she realized that uh, instead of helping people with all the ceremonies all the structure of the Buddhist uh, place uh, and she was the, the successor of Roshi Kaplo at that time. But she quit with that after listening to Krishnamurti. She decided that this, this was not the way that she wanted to help people. And she formed a, a group, an independent group in uh, Springwater, Rochester, New York. Mm-hmm. And then we met a woman. I met a woman, uh, Sandra. Uh, she's from Nicaragua and she's been there in the group for many years. So Tony now is uh, sick and, and she told uh, three persons to do the same job that she was doing, and she's one of them. So we invite her. Yeah. This is Sandra. I didn't get her last name. Uh, Sandra Gonzalez. That's her name. Okay. okay. So we invite her, and she was uh, very willing to come. And a uh, very nice woman. She just uh, uh, asked for the for the tickets. She didn't charge any money. So we did like three or four uh, sessions of uh, what is called silent retreats, seven days of uh, silence and meditation with the only, uh, the only requisite there is to, to be in silence the, the seven days. Yeah. If you wanted to go to meditation yeah. and sit and share uh, uh, some exchange in the afternoon, open up a, like a group where you can talk with others and with her about your experiences. You can go if you want or if you don't want, you don't go. The, the meditation uh, sessions, the same, they are free, optional. So it was nice with her. Gonzalo, I want to get a sense of when these things happen. So when did Tony Packer come and when did Sandra Gonzalez come? No, no. Like what year? Tony Packer, no, Tony Packer never came to Costa Rica. But, oh, okay, uh, I thought she did. I met her when I was in Rochester. Uh, oh, I see. Going to the Zen group, and she was she was part of the Zen group. Okay. It's, and then I, I she, she was splitting at that time with the with the Zen group. Okay, and th- so then Sandra Gonzalez came to Costa Rica. Yeah, but uh, what happened is that uh, being out of the Buddhist group, we realized some of us realized that we were more we were closer to to the way of uh, Tony Packer and uh, we wanted her to come. Yeah. We try at some at some moment, but uh, she was kind of uh, sick and she couldn't uh, come. And then uh, through through her, we could bring uh, uh, Sandra here. Okay. So when when this when was Sandra there? Just a few years ago, or? Yeah, some years ago, maybe like. Uh, six years ago let me see it was just after i came uh, from ramesh because okay. i was contact on my way to india i was already contacting her no even know what what will happen with ramesh but i was contacting her to bring her here to costa rica so when i came from ramesh i realized that i have to to, to accomplish this that i was already uh, talking to her it was kind of a compromise that we already had to, to that she came to Costa Rica and she uh, we organized the, the and these sessions of uh, silent retreats how, how was that how did you like it it was nice I mean I, I think that the, some people uh, who were knowing never in a formal sitting uh, meditation could uh, could benefit from that because uh, 
they were able to be in silence, which doesn't happen very often because of daily life and all the uh, activities that are going on all the time. So that, that was the first time that they could be like really in silence and, and with them. Yeah. And for those people, I think it was important at that, at that moment. And so we did it like three, four times, I think. And uh, after that, uh, a fellow of mine and me who were the, the main organizers, of, we decided that we didn't want to continue with that because uh, we didn't feel like it was really what uh, uh, at least her and some other people were needing here. Mm -hmm. Then we made contact with the, the, the next person that we contact was uh, Umani. Mm -hmm. We invite her. First, we started by buying uh, her book, first book that he wrote, she wrote. Yeah. And uh, talking a lot through internet and uh, organizing, uh, giving information to people here about, about her teaching with videos or her, her writings because nobody knew any, anything about money here in Costa Rica. So it was a process of uh, first getting people to know about her and then inviting, organizing the activity. So she came the first time and uh, she was very, accept, very well accepted by people. So we could see that next time we could organize a retreat, a longer retreat. So the, the second year <clears throat> she organized a 10 day retreat in a, on a beach, a nice place. Mm -hmm. And there were like maybe 17, 18 people who attended the, mm. the, the retreat. That's pretty good. What, what part of Costa Rica are you in? I don't really know the country. Okay. This is a really small country. And uh, this is uh, where I am right now is San Jose, is the capital. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I am right now at, at my sister's house where I have uh, this space to be able to talk to you where there is not so much noise around. Mm. It's a little town uh, uh, east of uh, San Jose. It's called Moravia. Okay. A lot of people. Let me just uh, let me just uh, um, uh, change the topic a little from the teachers to Costa Rica, and yeah. a lot of people from the U.S. and Canada and maybe elsewhere retire in Costa Rica. And so, are are you aware of that? Do, do a lot of people uh, that you know are they, you know, uh, from the yeah. North America or Europe or other places? Yes, I mean, the, especially because it's uh, so close to, to, to North America. I mean, it takes uh, five hours uh, straight from uh, Newark, New York, to get here. Yeah. And uh, people like the, the, the weather. It's not so hot or not so cold. So most of the time it's, it feels nice. Uh, the people are very, very warm people here in Costa Rica. Uh, it was declared Costa Rica the, the happiest country in the world by some organization in London who make a, a kind of survey about mm. some topics and they realized that it was the happiest country in the world. Mm. <laughs> and I guess it has some of, or true in that because you can see people like uh, taking life kind of uh, not so seriously. Unless so you are in a spiritual group, then you can see serious faces. So how, how much do I need to, uh, to live there? Depends. If depends. I want to live a simple, a simple life. No, I mean, I don't go out drinking. I don't party. I don't simple life. You would like to live in the city or you would like to live in the coast or you would like to live in the in the mountains, it depends. Oh, uh, let's see, somewhere near the coast, maybe the city. It's not not too far from the ocean. I would like to. Are you a person who likes to go to the to the beach? Yeah, I like the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, because... City's okay too. I don't know how close together they are. Yeah, because uh, the, most of the people who come here, since they have uh, suffered a lot of. Uh, uh, 
string stream call situations they they look for the for the cost so now the costs have become very expensive to buy a land there yeah to rent a house or whatever mm. so if you want to find something cheaper you go inside the country more, more in the mountains yeah you can you can find a house for 100 and let's say a small house for 150 dollars in the countryside yeah that's pretty inexpensive yeah uh, to buy groceries and other things people saying that it's expensive yeah groceries are more expensive yeah yeah groceries Grace. and uh, other things that the uh, you want to buy if you want to continue living the, the same way the same standard that you were living before maybe for those people are is not so so cheap but if you if you can adapt to live a simple life in in a in a in a place where you don't need to have special clothes or um, air conditioning or um, uh, you know to warm your house, it's not so expensive. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to come out there sometime. Yeah, yeah, review. Sounds nice. Of course, uh, whenever you decide i'll be here and uh, wishing to meet you in person and uh, take you around no problem yeah thank you yeah so um now unmani's been there what a couple times at least umani came two times i never went into any of the retreats i didn't i have never felt that i need to to listen to these people who have come here because uh, there is nothing that, uh, uh, I mean, there is nothing that I could uh, listen to that is uh, new or, or who could uh, make any more than the impact that Ramesh uh, had. So, I, but the people who organize this, I just help, help them way to contact them and to bring them here. But the organization, sometimes I... But I, I'm very interested at that. I don't like to have meetings. I don't like to be with people uh, discussing about prices and about food, what they're going to eat. For that, I am terrible. I don't want to deal with that. So, so, so you're my, part. Of, so there's an organization. So, like, what org? Like, is it just a group of people that uh, bring, like, on the money down? But it sounds like you're you're the one who gets in touch with her. But but there's an but there's another but there's a bigger you know, yeah, another no, no, group of people who, who deal with the, you know, the food and the costs and so on. Exactly. Maybe five persons, five, yeah. six persons uh, who have the the, uh, the meetings to organize the, the places where they're going to give the satsangs, to organize retreat if there is any retreat, um, and invitations to, to people, Right. that kind of things and make the, the person who comes as comfortable as possible taking them to the beach taking them to see volcanoes so that they feel like well this is natural in costa rica this is the kind of the the the, the atmosphere to make the visitor feel at home or better than mm -hmm. home and yeah so it this, sounds like it. i know um elena nijinsky said she had the best time of her life in costa rica but, oh, but we'll, we'll, we'll we'll get into elena we still want to talk about anamani like First of all, like I mean, don't you think you should go to some of these? I mean, the fact that you you're involved in bringing them here, and even though maybe you can't be, you know, you can't have any new, uh, you know, breakthroughs or realization, but um, maybe there might not be some, you know, shift in perception. But uh, you know, shouldn't you at least be there to support the people that you bring in? Well, I I, I am there. As far as, as as they need me, and of course I listen to Umani talking. Yeah. I I I became friend with Umani. I went to the course with her. The second time I invited her to where I was living in the mountains, and she came with another friend, and she spent two three days with us there. So I meet her in a in a regular basis as a friend, and I yeah. have listened to her talks. And I think that for some people, yes, and some people have expressed uh, admiration and they they feel that uh, they have learned or they have, I don't know what to tell, to tell you the truth, but 
that's what they say, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, you don't feel you need like an intensive retreat. Oh no with no. Oh no. That might just annoy you. That might, that might just annoy you more than anything else. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's just that the, all these people they have their their own way of uh, saying things. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and Omani, of course, uh, she had a, an awakening or she had a realization or whatever name you can call it. And, uh, and she's helping. She's going around the countries and people like her. And uh, for some people has been kind of uh, something uh, that made an impact and made a, uh, a shift happen in their life. As, 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 as far as I heard some people talking about it, but uh, I cannot put my hands on fire because that's what I I heard of only, right? Now, was it your idea to bring Anamani or someone else or the, in the group? No, it was my idea because yeah. I listened to, to her videos and her talks at that moment. And I say, this is a real, this is something real. This is something that people here in Costa Rica should uh, be able to listen and have a person like Umani who could uh, talk more like directly more uh, straightforward to there and confront them because uh, Umani is a person who, in her teaching, she really confronts people where ideas, uh, with uh, uh, beliefs, uh, all this. And so, yeah, I thought it was important for people to to listen to her and to be with her. Yeah. Now, I know Elena Nijinsky, of course, has been, you invited her. Yeah. And uh, it was through Elena that she recommended talk recommended talking to you. Yeah, Elena, for 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 me it was very good to 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 realize through internet that there was a this uh, liberation on leash. When I knew about it, I just thought that this is the way it has to be, like totally democratic and people willing to help each other to awaken and uh, without without any money there for that so my idea also of uh, something like that i was really surprised that it was happening and then i start talking or having a little uh, correspondence with uh, elena and with ilona also and yeah. then I, decided, I decided to go through the the process that they that they that they do through internet i did it as a as uh, seeing what what is happening there, and of course I recommend it to anyone who is interested in to investigate the reality or not reality of uh, a self. They have a good way of dealing with this, and the people who are there doing it, they are really people who are into helping each other to discover this. And then I I really believe into this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, as, as we went along talking, at, at one moment she expressed it, she expressed it, that uh, she would like to one day to come to Costa Rica and have uh, some activity here. And I say, okay, yeah, it will be nice. Uh, let's let's see what happens. And then yeah. after that, she went for the first time to Florida on yeah. a vacation. And it happened that people realized she was there and were calling her to, to come and, and have the, this direct pointing that she does. And that was the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know she's fairly new <laughs> at, uh, you know, uh, talking to people and having, you know, intensives and so on. Yeah, and put in some pictures and she looks so happy. Then she, I contacted yeah. She said she loved it there. It was the best time of her life. Like, you know, like what happened? You know, like what's the, uh, what's the well, uh, I, gossip? I contact her and uh, after that, and, and I say, why, why, why don't you come here to Costa Rica? Yeah. And she said, yes, I'd be willing to. So I said, let me talk to my friend, Jenny. She is the, the person who has the place, uh, who, who can, uh, who can have you there at her house, and then we can organize some meetings there at her house. But I have to, to get her interested in, to bring you here. She was only asking for the ticket, 
for us, this is perfect because uh, uh, we realize that not only this is a poor community, but also people, we are also people who believe that uh, spirituality has to be more like a, in a free way, no uh, charging money for, for something that is uh, totally free. Yeah. So, and she was, uh, so Jenny, Jenny did everything possible for her to come. Mm -hmm. uh, two or three friends got together and, and paid the ticket for her. Mm -hmm. yeah. She came and stayed at her house, Jenny's house. And uh, we took her around Costa Rica. She had many meetings, many meetings, and people were really attracted to her. She's a, a woman who really is uh, very easygoing, very uh, her style. Her energy is uh, soft, nice. Even if she's uh, very, she confronts the, the, the people, mm -hmm. but she confronts in different way like uh, that, that than Umani. Umani is more like uh, confronting with a more with a harder energy. Yeah. And Elena does it like more feminine. She has more like feminine energy, softly. Oh, and people love her. Yeah. Yeah. And she loved her, so it was a, a mutual. It was easy mm -hmm. for, for us. It was easy for her to do whatever people told her to do. So mm -hmm. for, for for her physical, and I told her, how could you stay there talking to to people for three, four hours? I mean, it was too much, huh? But she felt like doing it like that because she felt the need and she wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah. we took it around, we went to the beach, we had some meetings at the beach. We stayed with a friend there who has a house on the beach and then we had good times in between the, the meetings. Uh, we laugh a lot. So it was more like, a, I remember that day <coughs> we were on the, on, in the ocean, a friend of mine, Alvaro, Elena and me, and we laughed for one hour, just laughing, of seeing the whole joke of uh, looking for something that was already here. And how people are looking for an answer. And the answer is here. The answer is in the air. It's no need to, 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 to become uh, a, a seeker even if probably it's necessary to become a seeker to realize that you don't need to see a seeker, you know, the whole process. Well, yeah, the, the thing, yeah, but everyone who says, every, everyone who can, you know, laugh and say there's nothing to look for, at one point everybody was a seeker, you know, like, you, you know, you were reading Krishnamurti and, yes, yes. you know, everybody now, was a seeker at some point, almost it's everybody. True. It's true, and, and now I... I can laugh about it. For, for sure, I can laugh about it because it's crazy, totally crazy. It's a joke, looking for something that is always here. Yeah. But it's true. It's true. Maybe I forgot. <laughs> Sometimes I forgot that I was doing it the same, yeah. looking for answers, right? And probably this is uh, what the teacher, what the people who, for 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 unknown reasons, become. Uh, teachers or people who can guide other people to this, they feel the, the need of the people and they just uh, respond to that. Yeah. But seeking is okay because everyone does it, you know, and yes, whether it's necessary or not. I mean, if, if it's not necessary, then, then, then it's even more okay to do it. So, you know. And, and this is something that uh, is not done by anyone. I mean, like uh, this this realization has to 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 be deep in the sense that uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, in the phenomenal uh, in the appearance of uh, what we see as uh, as as real and see and seems real, this is just appearances. Uh, what that happened in in, in just in the phenomenal. What happens uh, after, beyond the phenomenal, we don't know anything, we cannot talk about, about it. We just can talk, argue, 
have concepts about what uh, we believe is here, even if it is only an appearance happening here, product of a conscious, and it's consciousness who does everything, nobody does anything. So the person who is, or, or the appearance as a person who feels that he is someone, it, it happens just because consciousness is doing like that. And then consciousness at some time in some organisms does the disidentification with that. But no one does anything. There are no seekers, really. Seeking happens, but there are no seekers. And this is, uh, well, it's, it's many people try to, 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 to explain this and through concepts. And I can tell you like the, the concept that mostly uh, some of the, in, in the tradition, at least in the tradition of Nisargadatta and Ramesh, uh, they talk about, you know, the phenomenon becoming the, I mean, the phenomenon becoming the phenomenon and in the phenomenon, everything happens. The sense of I amness, everything starts in this dream. But uh, before that, it's just the phenomenon in potentiality, potentiality to manifest itself. Mm -hmm. So the, the realization, the real realization is seeing this as a dream, dream by consciousness. No one is uh, really dreaming because there is no one there to dream anything. It's just consciousness dreaming. We are just the dream characters into the whole, into the whole picture. Do you uh, speak like this to groups much at all, or or do, do people see you more kind of as an organizer? I can talk freely about I or you even if I know that this is just nominal, right? Why to complicate life and talking in third person or, you know, but uh, it's true that there is no one here and no one there, but to communicate, I wanna talk in first person, okay? So when I came from <clears throat> Ramesh, mm -hmm. with this uh, realization or with this understanding and with, with this, especially with this piece of this acceptance the life goes on the way it is because uh, uh, there is no one here who can change or do anything. Uh, I, 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 ha I didn't have the, the, the words to, to, to talk about this. I mean, I, all I could do is to, to talk the same way that Ramesh talk or to tell people to read Ramesh or to listen to the videos of Ramesh. And that's what I did for, a, for, for some time. And then Ramesh died like one year and a half after I was there. He wasn't traveling anymore because he was too old. I wish he was traveling when I came here and I could have invited him to come and talk here, but it was impossible. Yeah. So that's when I start looking for for persons, for uh, for for teachers, for uh, you know, for these uh, communicators who can come and talk. Uh, stray from their own awakening or experience of awakening. Yes. So I, I, I didn't feel the the authority to talk about this. And, and also, when you live in, in, in a place, it's very difficult that people, even if people are looking at you as uh, nothing has happened because you, you continue your life exactly the same, with the same uh, difficulties in life, you know, that you had before and everything, how can they see that you have anything new to tell them? It's not, I don't know if it's true for everybody, because this is, this is how I think, how I think I got to know who you were, because I said to uh, Elena, I said, what's wrong with the people in Costa Rica? Why can't they have their own meetings with their own self-realized people? Why do they have to bring in Armani and this person and that person? Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you that. Let's talk about that um, because you know we I run groups in Nova Scotia and I don't like to bring in outsiders. I really, and I don't bring in any because I feel that there's enough local people who will come out and can speak. You know, uh, enough self-realized people here who can speak yeah. and, or, and who can learn how to speak here. I don't have to bring in. 
anybody. Um, and I won't bring in anybody. So, um, you know, that's kind of what I feel. People who are starting groups, or wherever they are, you know, might think about being totally locally based and seeing who is in their popular, their local population. It could be anybody. You know, they might not be polished teachers like, you know, some of the famous people, but they can learn. They can learn how to communicate this. And they can be encouraged and supported and promoted. Yes. So, no, I mean, no. what do you think of all that? I really understand what you're saying, and, and maybe this is a, a process, uh, Ramana Maharshi, well, special cases uh, like, like him. And even, yeah. well, Ramana Maharshi, uh, the awakening happened when he was 16 years old and he went to the mountain, stayed 20 years in silence before he started talking. What happened in, in those 20 years, it, it was probably a, a complete uh, dive into the self. And when he started talking, there was no even a doubt, uh, nothing, I mean, in the way to talk. But he wasn't talking, for sure. It was just, uh, uh, it, was, it was coming just out of, uh, out of the unknown or the nothingness or whatever you call it, right? And then that organism, in a way, that was uh, his mission. He was prepared for doing that. And it, and it is like every, like everything else in, in the world. I mean, like when somebody goes up and talks about this, if he talks okay or he doesn't talk okay, it's the way it is. I mean, that's the life doing that. Nobody's doing it. But it could be like I mean, like you say, and it attracted me when you say that. You no, know, especially because I feel that this like a, a personal thing, but I think that uh, it probably happens uh, all over around the world that uh, there are some people who they never talk about it. They they just go to her house. They live a simple life, and they don't bother even to talk because uh, they don't feel like to talk. Right. Right. There's a lot of people, yeah, probably millions of people like that. Well, no, I appreciate that uh, description of Ramana's life. I, I, I think when I mentioned him, it's, it was he's probably I'm sure he's an exception, you know, to every yeah. to everybody. <laughs> but I, I think that um, I think my my point is just that wherever you are in the world, any any location, I don't care where it is, you know, it's possible to find people who who um, like you said, there are people who who, who won't who don't want to talk about it. They're just living their life. But there are other people who do want to, who do have a need to talk about it, and I think uh, those people, uh, you know, will will a bit will come forth if they have, if they feel, you know, like they have the yeah. right group, yeah. if they're if they're understood, you know, and uh, at least that's what I'm finding, where where I am, and um, so um, no, yeah. that's, that's, I want to try to I want to encourage you to maybe, you know. You know, do more locally. But now, these five or six people who get together and bring in the outside people, what do they think about having just uh, some just local meetings and and trying to you know identify and support and encourage just some local uh, uh, teachers or potential teachers? What happens here is that uh, when you are in a group of people. And especially if you know them and uh, you are friends with them, and you have like uh, been into together into the search, and then you come to these meetings, everyone has his uh, own opinion, belief, and then the, the 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 meeting becomes kind of a a confrontation or an affirmation of what I see or what I believe or what I think. And that's not the, 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 the real the real meetings, uh, the real satsang. In the satsang, when they see that there is someone who has some kind of uh, spiritual authority, they listen to the person. And then when the person asks them to have questions, they are... Uh, very, very uh, interested in what they say because they see that person as an authority, spiritual authority. If that is not there, then the, the, the meeting becomes kind of a, 
just a, a confrontation or just affirmation of your ideas. Well, then you got to get rid of that group. It's not a good group. Yeah, so it has to be like a kind of a... <clears throat> I'm sure a they're good people. They're good, and I'm, you know, I'm sure they're good people, but that's not the kind of a group that a local community needs in order to, you know, um, in order to welcome in, uh, you know, some of the people that could share these teachings in an open way, not a confrontational way. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's easier to say, but in reality, uh, at least I haven't found this uh, this openness to, to, to listen to yeah. somebody talking and uh, just listening without the, 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 the notion that uh, what they are listening is something that is that, that comes from a belief or for some, from something that the other person has read and that mm. uh, they don't feel that this is the, the direct experience or direct uh, living of it. Yeah, right? interesting. It well, is, I don't know. I mean, there's got to be people there that could come together and form an open group, an open group where there's no beliefs and there's nothing being taught. There's just um, people expressing themselves you know, freely from a place right. of, uh, you know, realization. Um, yeah, in a place of uh, inquiry. Well, and inquiry. No, no one's claiming what's true. No one's teaching anything. No one's, no one knows anything. Exactly. So, uh, this is, there's this there's is a, a group like that could be formed anywhere, but, uh, but I don't and know it what it takes. Be, you know. it, it takes uh, some, not only willingness, but uh, it takes at least the the, 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 the understanding that uh, if we are in a group like that, it's not about talking about our beliefs, uh, about how I, me, feel about this or that, because that could be like a, a group therapy. That's another thing, right? right. Well, you have to make clear that that's not, uh, that's not what it's about. But you, if you have a group and you're there and you're talking about what you were saying earlier, you know, about, you know, consciousness is dreaming its, itself, all these, you know, it's not, there's no one, no one, it's not the, you know, nobody would argue it, but somebody would say the same thing in their own way. Yes. And that's and the kind of a group, that's an open group that can develop, that can, that can, you know, nurture a teacher, you know, a person can teach, can express okay. themselves in that kind of an atmosphere. Exactly. And they have to learn to or we have to learn to listen the expression of this in different ways and not comparing this way with another way that we read or we listen to another teacher and that teacher is right that one who is talking he's not right because he's not talking in the same way mm, right right so, right 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 For, forget the outside teacher just you know it's just the people who are there are you know talking about things as they know it and it's not a, it's not a matter of arguing it's a matter it like could, you said of listening sharing yeah no it, it could be really nourishing really interesting i i have to tell you something uh, next week uh, there is uh, a man from uh, alburquerque i think i told you about him uh, his name is uh, hashim saki yeah. and uh, hashim uh, had the, the the, and the good luck of uh, meeting uh, Nisargadatta when he was 19 years old mm -hmm. in, in India and by accident and he stayed with Nisargadatta for seven months mm. and then after that uh, he, his life became kind of a regular life with uh, you know marriage uh, family work he worked as a pilot and he retired one year ago by talking to people on the internet like I always do and because I, I like to share about this, uh, this kind of uh, conversation that we're having, I met uh, Hashim and we start talking about standing of, of, of this. And he mentioned me that he wanted to come to Costa Rica because uh, he was thinking of Costa Rica like a place to, to retire. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, good, that's good. Uh, when you come... Uh, well, I will talk to some of my friends and I tell you that you will come, uh, but they probably would like to, to meet you before. So 
now there are two women who are waiting for him and his wife to to have them in their houses. We they have organized even some visits to some touristic places here, mm-hmm. and uh, he's going to give some talks, informal talks. Oh, great! He can talk about it. Yeah. He's not charging. He he doesn't see him as a teacher. He just talks to people who are interested into this mm-hmm. and who is who are open to listen to him. And uh, he told me that what he wanted to do is just like uh, an informal conversation. Let's talk about anger. How is it work with anger, right? And from anger, go deep, deep, deep into what is the meaning of all this. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, when we were talking before about this, uh, organizing this kind of uh, groups where people, local people can express themselves, I think that I feel that something is going to happen after his visit here to Costa Rica. Yeah, I, sounds like it. Yeah, if if he creates the right atmosphere, people will, you know, want to, uh, you know, continue that. Yes. And uh, we've been uh, talking almost every day, sometimes two times a day. And we talk, we make jokes and we talk about anything, but we also talk about the teaching and the uh, uh, something that I read and I uh, comment with him and something that uh, he wrote because he writes uh, under the, the name uh, I am you. I don't know if you have seen, her, seen him. Yeah, I am you. I'm sure it sounds like something I've seen. Yeah, he's, I think that he has you as a friend. Yeah. And I, may, I remember I mentioned you that you would like to, to talk to him because he really has this uh, understanding and he's very articulate with that. Even if uh, he does through a, a concept, yeah. which is something that uh, I would prefer not to have a concept to, to talk about this, but sometimes it seems necessary for people to communicate through, through a concept, right? Yeah. But it will be interesting that sometimes you could <clears throat> meet and uh, talk yeah, about... Yeah, I might, I might end up talking to him, yeah. Yeah, and then I might tell you also what happened after the... The coming, he's coming to Costa Rica, and, and the experience we are going to have with him. He's yeah, gonna wh- stay. when is he coming? He's coming soon. Yeah, he's coming the next week on Tuesday, the 7th of May, and he's staying for seven days only. Oh, good. Yeah, but it will be a, a first approach for him to, to the country and see if uh, he would like to, to live here. Yeah, he might want to live there, yeah. It will be excellent to have him here and to organize... Uh, this type of uh, tokens that you are talking, even if he's not from here, but I'm totally sure that he allows this kind of thing that we are talking about, local people expressing themselves in the understanding with their own words, without using concepts or without uh, just uh, 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 saying, repeating uh, what other teachers uh, have said. Yeah, and it's, and it's also... Um, it's also a group meeting really with no, no single teacher, no single authority. Right. You know, like right. anyone can be the teacher, but like you say, it's, it's not, a, it's, um, you know, anyone who's speaking, it's, again, it's done in an open, an open way. Um, but, but there's a way to run these kind of meetings and, uh, if this is what we do, I've been doing for a few years and, uh. Oh, really? It can certainly be done there. Oh, good. I mean, that, that, for example, that your experience into that, it will be really appreciated here. Yeah, I mean, may- like, maybe I should come down for you could a while and here. we can run some meetings, groups or something. Of course. They, I mean, we could organize something for you to come and explain how things are going there in the Nova Scotia, in, in the meetings. And you could yeah. be a, a, a great help to, to, to people here, to, to the group in that sense. Yeah, that's why, you know, if I could do s- something, it would be great, you know, to, to, you know, just to, you know, help get something like that started yes, there I, I, or, or anywhere. I don't know what I could do, but uh, it would be interesting I, anyway. I think that if uh, this uh, conversation, you just uh, put it there in your, you know, in your page. Yeah. And, I will uh, uh, tell people to listen to it. People who are, uh, who could be um, potential members of this group, 
and by your words, by your saying about your experience, and I'm sure that they will it will come an invitation for you to do that because things happen like that. Something is in the moment necessary, and mm. things start to happen. Well, they can you know take a look at the uh, website for my group, and you know if you have three or four or five people with with a similar vision you know, the vision we're talking about, then you can you can form a very good group, you know. Yes. So they all sort of have to have the same idea, the same vision. Um, and basically, it's just a group of being open, just open, you know. There's no, there's no truth, there's no, there's no one tradition, no one leader, you know. Yes, yes, but it will be very good for us if you come and make us an introduction about how is this and explain to us the spirits that you're having that you're having there in North yeah North. if if it would be useful maybe i could come or maybe maybe i don't have to come but uh, either way i you know this is something i really enjoy um, talking about and promoting and just suggesting to people that it's possible that wherever they live in the world they can form a group they can form a group like like what we're talking about and it's well described on my the web page for my group it's in nonduality.ca but i don't yes. want to make this interview about me but um, no, 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 well, no. i want it to be about you and some of the girls that you invite down there yes because you know you tend to invite some attractive women <laughs> well uh, uh, a pretty a pretty woman uh, people are more willing to to go and see her yeah, yeah, that's why I don't think I'm gonna go because you know, you know <laughs> I have to get. Uh, but but and, and what I, I and I've seen some pictures, you know, the photographs yeah. of some of your the retreats and the teachers, and you 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 always it seems like you you always you get them all to go to the beach and uh, to uh, and to wear bathing suits. Okay, but this is I mean this is Costa Rica, right? Well, I'm it, just saying, it, you know. It means a rich, rich coast, Costa Rica, and uh, we have uh, really beautiful beaches. And when somebody from outside comes to Costa Rica, well, they want to to see the beach. And, and you're, not, are, you're not you're not just trying to get like Elena and Armani in bathing suits, are you? No, no, not really. But but, oh. but when but when you see them in bathing suit, they, they look nice. All right, yeah. I'm just you know. Yeah, no, no. I'm just, I'm just checking it out. I'm just finding out. That's all. That's no, no. We we don't try anything. No, Those things happen by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just noticed you had all the uh, you know girls on the beach, but but like you say, Costa Rica means rich beach. Rich coast. Yeah. Coast. Yeah, and uh, there is a place here in Costa Rica, uh, Nosara, in north of uh, San Jose. And it's like a spiritual, you know, new age uh, place where there are a lot, a lot of uh, yoga centers, international yoga centers. People talk to, to practice yoga and also to become teachers in yoga. And they also invite people uh, to give satsangs. Uh, for example, Pamela Wilson have come here and uh, uh, who else? Uh, well, uh, people who, who, who come to Costa Rica, sometimes don't, they don't even come to San Jose. They go straight to that area, Guanacaste, or just just land in the airport, and the next day they just go there because there is like a spiritual mecca, like a, a, a tropical Sedona, something like that. Yeah. So, so you can see people from all over the world, beautiful women, of course, very beautiful women who are into this uh, practicing yoga or the the uh, five rhythms. Uh, uh, in other things that I don't even have any idea, but I know that there is a, a big uh, international spiritual community or new age community. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that if you come, I, I promise to take you there so you will uh, see what is happening there. Yeah, well, I'm interested in all the spirituality and the new age and, you know, I'm not that I'm not interested in the women. Yes, yes. Just the spiritual astrology and everything i don't know and you have all of that there all of that and whatever comes in the west in europe and the united states next day is in costa rica 
But it's interesting. I think you said earlier in the conversation that it it is a, there's a lot of spirituality in the country there. But you also said that they're they're you know they're aware of the non-duality. I mean, you know, Pamela Wilson, you said was is there, so she, she's a non-duality teacher. Yeah. Also, Jack O'Keefe. We have her yeah. here. I helped Jack O'Keefe with her center. It didn't work, but he was giving us some satsangs and. Uh, Cesar Teruel was here. Uh, I, I, I contacted Cesar Teruel. He's a, a guy from Venezuela who works mainly in Russia. Uh huh. Yeah. Heard of him. You, um, yeah, a lot of people go down there. Like you said, I think it's a pretty popular place um, for teachings. That, and even Eckhart Tolle, you know, was, was down there. So people, you know. Because it's partly a vacation center too, a place to yeah, vacation. Yeah, vacation. we were planning like a, a retreat with uh, Elena for this June, and she realized that uh, this is not a good time. The best time will be in January when it's really cold in the north, and people yeah, will be more yeah. willing to come, have a vacation, and at the same time have a, a retreat. Yeah. For me, for me, it's kind of uh, right now like. Uh, well, I always say the same thing. It's over for me. I don't. I'm not interested anymore in bringing some other people. I will retire and go to a farm and start uh, growing some lettuces and tomatoes because uh, all I want is to be in silence, peace there, and I don't want meetings. And but suddenly I re- I, I forgot. I remember now that I was in contact with Francis Bennett. You know Francis Bennett? I'm aware of him on Facebook. Yeah, and he just wrote a book and all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know him personally. I never talked yeah. to, to, him. The, to him. He posted. Yeah, I like him because the fact that he was a, a Christian Catholic in a order mm-hmm. in a, for many years, and suddenly he has this awakening. He had to go out of the order and became a regular guy looking for a job when he didn't work for a long time or never maybe and then uh, he had to make a living but uh, this awakening that he wants to express through to, to post this and now he's willing to come to costa rica maybe in july and then just uh, telling people okay this is what francis does he wrote this book uh, he had an interview one of these days with uh, uh, Rick Archer in, in the Buddha at the gas pump station. Look at them. Mm-hmm. See if you like him, if you are interested in that. I give you all the information about him, all the contact, and ask him to come. He will be willing to come for a weekend because he cannot stay more than that. But he has designed a, a very intensive weekend where he can tell all he wants to say. He comes on Friday and leaves on Monday because he has a regular job. Yeah. So every time that I wanted to quit, I find that there is someone else that I was talking to and and, proce- and, yeah. and trying to, to, to bring him to Costa Rica. Yeah, like, people, like, people love to go, probably love to go to Costa Rica. I mean, it's so beautiful there. Oh, yeah. And you see, we are talking now and I am just inviting you to come to Costa Rica. So next time I will tell you, with you, Jerry, it will be the last invitation I will do. And really? So there is another one. <laughs> It'll be what? So only after Jerry, there is another one. But no, I, I'm sure now yeah. after after Francis, only Jerry. Yeah. Because Jerry is the person who is going to organize here or help us to organize a group in the way we were talking about. Right, right. And you don't have to invite anybody. Find out who's there, who's 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 next door to you, who's down the street, around the block, you know, the local, uh, the local carpenter, the local mechanic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, so you you are willing to help us, okay? Well, I, I, you know, if I have to come down there, I don't know if I have to come down there, but I mean, I would love to just see, I would love okay, to just but- visit there, but uh, practically speaking, you know, maybe I don't have to come, I don't know what I'd do, but... I would probably, um, if I came down, you know, you would have to get a few people together yeah. and uh, as, we, as would we, ha- do, we would have a meeting. As we do all the time, we send you a ticket, we 
put you in a nice place where you can live. We, we oh, take you around good. Costa Rica. You have a vacation, and at the same time, you help us to organize this. Good. Good. Let's do it. Let's. Uh... I will start talking. Let's do about it in a few months. Maybe. Yeah. Let me know. Yeah. When you have uh, enough time, that. you take a vacation and you just uh, uh, organize the, the trip to come and, and visit the country and help us with uh, organizing the group with your experience about this uh, kind of uh, groups. Yeah, let's, uh, well, you know, on your end, you have to uh, talk to, you know, find three, four or five people with a similar vision yeah. and... Uh, start to you know envision it and then I, I, take it from there i'm sure totally sure that this is the time for it we are on timing because uh, we were talking about this i have the total confidence that that's for some reason yeah i i, I just feel it in the air that this is our next next step here in costa rica something yeah. like you are talking about yeah good good well you know if i can help then that'll be great yeah, you're really welcome, and you will see, we'll take care of you, you will go back sad to, to Canada, <laughs> and uh, I know. Willing, <laughs> willing to come back to Costa Rica. Oh, I know, it, it would be great, I know, it would be great hospitality yeah. in Costa Rica. Like yeah, I said, could. Elena has said she had the best time of her life, so I know it's oh, a yeah. very and hospitable she, country. I know she's sincere about it, I, I don't have any doubt that she didn't say to be, you know, to be kind with people. No, she was feeling it. She was even crying when she went back to the yeah. United States. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an honor, Gonzalo, to even think that uh, you, 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 would, you would invite me there. It's, you know, we, we don't know what it'll be, but it's, 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 it's an honor. Thank you. I think it's an honor for me to be talking to somebody like you who has uh, dedicated so, mon so many years uh, since 19, what, 97, something like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I went on the internet in '97, and then in '98 we started the first group. You know, again, it's the kind of group we're talking about—just people talking, yes. people talking. You know, and, and uh, without any single leader or, you know, tradition or book we all refer to. You know, just people. But you have so this, you, you have invited people, uh, kind of known people, to to, to the group to talk. Well, I had the the online group, the internet group. I never, I, can't, I don't know if I ever really invited people to it. People just found their way there. Yeah, but I mean, like to to to, to the group, to the local group. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't well, know any. I don't invite anyone. I mean, it's just local people. Okay, okay. One of the okay. people in our group um, invited Scott Killaby, but, yes. but she has her own group. So, um, and, and that's her. You know, you know, any anyone could, you know, is certainly free to do whatever they want. But uh, mm -hmm. but the main group that I'm that I run, uh, we don't really invite anyone. We just um, have a lot of good local people. You That's know. good. I mean, that probably, I mean, there's a difference in maturity there than here. Like, like I told you before, uh, before I was reading, uh, well, I had another uh, so-called teacher before uh, I am that who was a uh, Jean Klein. I started reading his books, mm -hmm. and he was like my first uh, advice teacher. My books, I never met him. Yeah, but at that time, nobody here in Costa Rica. But in your place, probably you have uh, many years ahead of us in, into this. So there are more people who are open already to to this, who have traveled to India. Uh, who have uh, been in contact with this uh, tradition, Advaita Vedanta, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So well, you that... know, find the people you know like yourself who you can form a you know a group with, and uh, that that'll be like the core of your group. Yes. Yeah. You will see. It will happen very fast. You and find a couple it... of people, two, three, four people that you know. Yeah. That's the that's the main thing for now, yeah. Yeah, and I think that uh, as I told you that uh, Hashim, uh, when I meet with uh, Hashim, I, uh, next week I will comment about our conversation. I will let him know what yeah. we talk about this, 
And I'm totally sure he will agree with this, and he will help us also in this in this yeah. uh, in this direction. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, okay. but I, I expect, I hope, to see you here in Costa Rica too. All right, thank you. Then let's uh, you know let's uh, be thinking about it, That's and good. then it'll happen. Yeah, it will. I'm sure. I would love that, and uh, hopefully it would be you know helpful. What do you do to keep busy? Do you uh, are you you're retired? It sounds like you. Uh, not really, not really, Jerry. I am a, a person who came to a point that I am not really interested in working so much. I mean, just uh, do the necessary things to survive. Yeah. I spend a lot of time in the countryside. There is a place uh, here where there are nice mountains, and I have many friends there. Mm -hmm. So I spend the days uh, there and walking in the mountains, talking to local people who are kind of farmers, and I am more and more into the direction of, of becoming a, a student, at least a student of farming. Of farming? Yeah, I would like to have a, a good garden and, and uh, you know, to grow lettuces, uh, carrots, uh, all these kind of uh, vegetables. Mm-hmm. And be keep busy into that. I I'm getting retired. I'm getting my pension in, in January very soon, mm -hmm. and I I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just do do some farming. How how much land do you think you could farm? Oh no, it's uh, I have a, a friend who has a, a big farm. Yeah. And I asked her to give me a piece of land there to to do it, and say of course uh, you are yeah. free to yeah. come whenever you want. It's where you can live. You just cook your food and just use, uh, use your tools and do the garden. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I am looking for now. So you take a lot of walks and uh, when do you, um, what time of day do you like to walk? Oh, I, I do a lot of walks because uh, I don't like to, I don't have a car. I don't like to yeah. drive anyway. Uh, if I can avoid a bus, if it is a ride of five, six, seven kilometers, mm. I prefer I prefer to walk. Yeah. So I just take the buses when it's uh, a long way, but otherwise uh, in the city, walking from one place to another, I prefer doing by by walking. So just by doing that, I don't need to go to the gym. Right. I walk a lot. Yeah. Right. That's good. Honestly, I enjoy seeing the birds and just sitting there under a tree and not even waiting for the for the alignment because you know, it's, it's not necessary. <laughs> hmm. yeah, 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 that's that's, yeah, that's a good that's, way. To, good way to that's the way to live. You know, it just well, it, it's just it just came being. like. like just it came like that because I had three daughters. Uh, one of them is 42, the other is uh, 39, going to 40, and the younger is uh, 34. They are independent, they have their own life, professions, uh, boyfriends, mm -hmm. uh, children. My ex wife left me when I, after 20 year, 28 years of being married, so I don't have any responsibility. I just have to take care of me mm -hmm. the best way. So I am uh, kind of very free from from external uh, situations. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it's good. Like, your your kids are all doing your three daughters. Yeah. Three daughters are all doing well. Exactly, and then uh, uh, my needs are almost nothing. Just uh, some food, a place to 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 sleep, and a lot of nature around me. That's that's all I I really need. You don't need much. You probably don't need much money. Oh no! To live, you know, buy good food. See a movie, a good movie. I movie. spend like eight dollars, and then mm. a very good movie. But after that, I regret to have spent eight dollars in a movie because uh, it's a repetition of stories, scenes that you already mm. know for a long time, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different actors, different scenes, but uh, uh, the same, the same, the same story. Right. So I found more and more that it's nice to be in silence, uh, deep 
abiding in, in, in the self, like uh, Ramana used to say. Yeah, life becomes like a silent retreat in a way. Exactly. There is no need to to certain times, certain places for meditation because meditation is uh, everywhere at any moment. Mm. Yeah, so, but you know, it's it's a nice way though to keep busy to be involved with teachers and groups and people that are interested yeah. in these things. It's a good way to spend time too. That, that was what kept me going on and uh, I had a, an old computer and couldn't do so much. It was so slow and uh, broken and then my <coughs> younger daughter gave me this laptop which I am very happy using for, for this. Yeah. And it's nice to find, you know, people who understand <laughs> what you're, oh, where, you're yeah. where you're coming from. Do you oh, find, I, do you find, yeah, yeah. I have like seven, find, uh, I think that I have like 700 uh, friends in, uh, yeah. yeah. And every time that somebody appears saying, uh, accept me as a friend, yeah. I know it's somebody who I can uh, talk about these things. So, probably, yeah. Yeah, mutual interest because uh, that person is friend with another who has this kind of similar interest. And so, yeah, uh, Facebook has become for me a source of. Uh, of uh, expanding about, you know, with videos, uh, books, uh, friends all over the world who share the same, the same uh, view. And yet, with, it, yet, yet it's just as well to sit alone and watch the birds or something. Oh, yes, of course. I mean, like, uh, so beautiful to be by yourself, which is a, a wrong way of saying because you can never be by yourself. I mean, whose who's self you are just there. I mean, it's just there. Right? Mm. Now, do you talk to any, you say you talk to farmers or the, the, the local people. Do you get into yeah. any conversations with them about nature or the nature of, uh, you know, just being, <laughs> do any of them get into talk like that? Do you talk to yeah. any, anyone like that? It's difficult. Uh, what I must do when I, in, in the country, I go at night to a bar where people uh, who are farmers, they come to have some drinks before mm. they go to home, watch yeah. the news. Yeah. And mm. Life, their interest. So I learn from them a lot of things that I am not familiar with and realize the, the culture that they have about being farmers, mm -hmm. and I, I have contact with them, we make jokes and everything, I've been accepted into, into this place as, as a visitor, but uh, a special visitor in the sense that uh, they see me often there, so they have accepted me like part of the group, mm -hmm. and I enjoy those times just being, being there with whatever is happening there, having some drinks, talking to people yeah. about yeah. their lives, and once in a while, I see, I mean, there are some really wise people who come and tell something that I make me realize that uh, this uh, sense uh, or this awakening is uh, is totally uh, not private to anyone, right? This is mm -hmm. just over <clears throat> there. Yeah. What do they? What do you drink there? I mean, do they have like a local uh, beer, wine, or, or, or what do they, they have? have a, no, they have every kind of uh, you know liquor. But uh, what I mostly drink is uh, beers. I prefer mm. to because they are not so strong, like whiskey or vodka or tequila. Sometimes I also somebody invite me to a drink. I also drink that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Sounds like a good good life. Oh yeah, wonderful life, really good life. I mean, there is uh, no no complaint. Uh, once uh, there is the acceptance uh, that uh, this is uh, all there is, is no fighting against. No fighting. Totally grateful for for yeah. the moments 
that uh, that are uh, enjoy at, uh, at in peace. What yeah. else uh, we look for? If peace is the most essential uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you have it, and you're bringing it to. Uh... Well, I don't know if you're bringing peace, but you're bringing, uh, you know, awareness, I guess, to people. If 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 uh, if, uh, if uh, like you say, if I am bringing awareness, uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, if uh, if people uh, see that uh, there is a uh, yeah, an acceptance, uh, there is peace here uh, in this organism and and uh, no complaints. Maybe that will uh, say something and some people will be touched by that. It might, it might happen, like I am touched with some people that I have met in the past and sit by themselves and I see something, I feel something that uh, is there, kind mm -hmm. of a, 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 a peace or happiness and, and, and I admire and I am very happy just by being with a happy person. Mm -hmm. Right? This is kind of very yeah. human, right? Yeah, that's really and that's really the great way of teaching too, if you, if you want to use the word teaching, not that you're trying to teach anything, but it's a great yeah. way of communicating, sharing, communicating. You don't you don't have to use the word teaching, but just just being there and be who you are right right there i mean no no pretending doing nothing because uh, uh, ultimately there is nothing that uh, you can teach by by words uh, i mean you can uh, say something to 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 try to to put the attention somewhere but uh, ultimately it's more the attitude that uh, in life what is more imp more, more important Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that brings it back to these local groups, you know, that's the kind of sense, you know, if a group has that kind of sense of that's, that's what's important, you know, yes, just yes. that being, that being, being natural, then, then that just, benefits, uh, you know, a group like that. And just a sense of friendship, of uh, you know, like a friendship in the basic sense of uh, we are uh, here as a, even if uh, this is just uh, something that is happening in the appearance of things, uh, uh, well, okay, this mm -hmm. is it, uh, what is happening, but uh, why not to, to, to share this in, in, a, in a friendship way? Yeah. Yeah, I think and that's that's a healthy vision. And those things uh, just uh, are spontaneous uh, happening. I mean, like it's no no, no pretension of, of making things happen. Just uh, happen by themselves when people get together and they share this uh, vision. Uh, maybe at the beginning, you you make a call to people and say, let's let's do this, let's play this. Oh, yeah. And it, and people might come or might not come. Mm. Uh, but that's not up to you to to do anything about it, right? It's just right. some that could happen at any moment. Right, yeah. And it's beautiful. When it happens, it's beautiful. I really enjoy, I am very, a very social guy. I mean, I, I love to talk to anyone because I, I feel the connection immediately with anyone. I, I mean, I don't feel any disconnection. I feel the, the, the connection. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to be, even if you like to be alone, you like to, you know, even if you say your life is like a silent retreat, there's still, there's still, you still have to be social. You can't, you can't, you Oh, know, yes, yeah. It wouldn't be natural to try to escape it or to avoid people. Oh, no, no, so that's people not. people come like... and they go out of your life, you know, in the course of the day or the week. Yes, and uh, even walking on the street in the middle of the city. Right. Once in a while, I have to stop because a vendor is approaching me or I am talking to anyone there and mm -hmm. I feel totally connected. I don't see any difference here and there. I mean, like I don't, some, 
I totally lost into the into the exchange. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Whatever that exchange is. Right. Or, or, I mean, or like, whoever it is, like you said, it could be the beggar. It could be anyone. S- someone I mean, giving so. you a service. Someone or the bus driver. Yeah. Whatever. Even if it, sometimes it seems that there is another one pretending to be someone, and the, so you can acknowledge that. And, and, and at the moment that you acknowledge that, that also uh, dissolves. It, it melts mm-hmm. away. Yeah. By by the acceptance of everything, including the the, the belief in, in in an entity. Mm-hmm. So even if even if you believe there's an entity, a separate person there. Oh no! Once you once that, once you look at it, then even that belief dissolves. Yeah, and sometimes uh, you uh, some people feel like uh, they really are like someone special or important or whatever. And once uh, they, they realize that they don't have to play that uh, that role, they 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 forget the role and they just melt. Okay, yeah. Hmm, just melt. Well, they they disarm themselves. Huh? They don't. Yeah. yeah. They they immediately they feel that they don't have to play that because there is no need. It's just a communication to say something but it's more than that it's beyond that it's just uh, the oneness that we are mm. well that's uh... life is uh, it's easy life is nothing complicated huh? it's only thoughts uh, belief that make this uh, kind of uh, complicated but uh, thoughts are your thoughts and when they are seen as uh, as that is just uh, Nothing really important. It's life's easy. It's but it's hard to let it be easy. I think for some sometimes. It's life, uh, life is hard. I mean, life is hard when you think it's hard. Yeah. That that's a, that's a thought or a belief. Mm. But if, if the thought is not there or the belief is not there, what is left is just life. Yeah, maybe it's not easier and it's not hard. No, it's, it's hard. I mean, hard, uh, you might call hard because uh, you have to walk from here to there. Yes, it's hard. Maybe you, in that moment, the energy is not so high, so it'll be hard, right? Right. Or uh, you have to to, to, to do a job uh, before the, you thought that you had some more time, but you don't have it, so it's hard in that sense, but... It's not hard in the sense that, uh, uh, like, uh, there is that you need to prove something, that there is something to accomplish in this life, that there is nothing that you can be wrong about it because that doesn't exist. Well, Gonzalo, I think we covered a lot. I think we covered a lot of. Oh, I mean, we have uh, been very, very nice. I think we talked talk. about a lot. We talked about. Costa Rica, we talked about all the people you bring there, your opinions of people. We talked yes. about the possibility of a, you know, a, a, you know, a local group. And then we and then I then I got to know about you, you know, like what you do, what your values are, what uh, yes. what interests you, what's, you know, where you're coming from. I think that's that's really important. It's that's the most important thing. On my on my side, I I can see it through to your page, what you have been doing uh, all these years, and uh, I, I really appreciate for the people who have been benefiting from from your interviews, from your uh, uh, writings, from everything that you have put there in, in your page. I mean, I think that many people around the, the world have to appreciate all, the, all, all the, the hours that you have invested into this. I do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, and um, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, we're just doing what interests us, and then if you do it long enough, it looks like you've it looks like you've done a lot, but but you don't really feel like you've done anything, you know. Yeah, true. That's true. That, I mean, this is the the meaning for me when people say that uh, they have to work. I say for me the the and the the meaning of the, of the word uh, work is when you do something that you have to do 
in order to survive, to make money or whatever. But whenever you are doing something that you really enjoy, even if that gives you money, for me, that's not really work. Yeah, you're more or less doing what you feel you have to do. And uh, and then you can list all those things. Someday you can sit down and make a list and it looks like uh, then, it, then it, you know, maybe it impresses some people, you know. Exactly. But, but, yeah. but, you, but you don't, but you know. So I, there's a time to do that. There's a time to put that, make a list of all your things, and uh, yeah. So uh-huh. it looks. So it, it it helps. It's 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 another way of communicating with people, so they know who who you are, and they, maybe they want to contact you, or maybe they want to avoid you. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> it doesn't Could doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that uh, people sometimes, uh, even if you are in a very relaxed, peaceful way. They they feel confronted by that. Yeah. Uh huh. They 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 try to avoid you because it's too much, too much peace, too much silence there. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, they need you to 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 be against something. They <laughs> <laughs> they need you to be against something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have some opinions, some belief, huh? So they can talk to you, fight with you, be well, against I, you. But I find that when I when I interview people, I do want people who have something, something that they're fighting for, or something they're doing. Like you're like one. I was interested in talking to you because you're doing, you know, you're inviting people. You know, you you're an organizer, so that's something. So you yeah. know, I, I like to, I, I like to talk to people where. You know, who are doing something? They're not just talking about ultimate reality. Oh yeah, sure. you know. I mean, I mean, I mean, we can talk about that. That's that's part of it. But I like talking to people who are like doing. You know, they have some invo- specific involvement in something. You know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Even if you yeah. were a farmer, maybe you were just farming. We can talk about farming. When you know, you know, when when you get into farming, maybe we can talk about that. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've been in, in, in this place, in, in this bar that I was telling you, and I listen to people talk about things that I don't know anything about. It, and, and, and I realize how, 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 may, how many things I don't know anything about, especially about living in the countryside, because I am a city person, and I get so interested to know about what they're talking about, how they cut the, the trees, what is the good time after the first rain, how many days uh, going to be to the first flowering of the coffee plantation, for example, things like that. I mean, it's amazing to listen to that and say, wow, this is a, a, a new world that I didn't know anything about for being such a, uh, an asshole seeker of uh, spiritual things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must be. So uh, So there's a lot of, co- I mean, I know there's, co- I know coffee plantations, uh, um, obviously, are are are, are uh, known, you know, for Costa Rica. So, the farmers that you know, uh, do, do most of them or many of them then grow uh, coffee beans? In this place that, that I visit, there are uh, like the farmers the you know, co- yeah, best coffee in the in the world. So they really, grow the coffee, yeah. They grow the coffee, and there are some people who are starting to grow uh, organic coffee, and. Uh, uh-huh. They sell it in the United States, in Europe, in uh, small quantities, but they are really good pay. And uh, these farmers, uh, this is uh, the main, the main source of uh, of earning money. But they also uh, grow other things, you know, vegetables and uh, beans, uh, rice. Uh, they have a uh, cow, so they make uh, cheese from the cows. Uh, so many mm-hmm. other things, so, yeah. Quite an quite an industry. Yeah. Do you drink coffee there? Do you drink much coffee? I I, I love coffee. I have uh, but I have like two two cups of coffee a day. One in the morning and one in the afternoon. So do you? It's all local coffee, I guess. I assume. Oh yeah, total local. Uh, the 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 one you will drink in a Starbucks is um, probably from Costa Rica, all countries, but Costa Rica is excellent coffee. And how do you make your coffee? How do you prepare it? Do you grind beans, or do you buy it ground, or how do you how do you make your coffee? No, I already buy it like in powder. And then uh, the traditional way of making coffee here in Costa Rica is you have like a, a bag, it looks uh, it's just like a, a bag, 
you put the coffee inside, you boil some water, and you pour in it. It's mm -hmm. the, the best, best, better flavor into a, in this bag uh, than into uh, you know the 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 machine, the percolator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It keeps the, 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 the essence much better. Do you um, add anything to it, milk, or just drink it black? Black, uh, uh, for a long time, I haven't put uh, sugar or milk into the coffee, just black coffee. Yeah. I like I like the flavor. I, I like the yeah. taste. Yeah. It must be good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really good. You will see. Soon you will see by yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Sounds good. Well, Gonzalo, Gonzalo Fernandez, it's uh, an honor to speak to you and to learn about Costa Rica and to learn about what you do and just to get to spend time with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jerry. And very soon we'll be in contact. Any moment you would like to know anything else from Costa Rica or whatever, be, be, feel free to, to contact me. And